Hey, what up? Connect Daily Bread, where we recognize man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Uh, out here on campus, hitting our Jericho Walk. Uh, an awesome chapter today. Please read it. Please check it out. 1 Corinthians 13, uh, often called the love chapter. Uh, and, and really just lays out, remember, we we're talking about uh, spiritual gifts uh, in chapter 12. And Paul closes that by saying, I'll show you still a more excellent way. And that more excellent way is love. And here we get laid out that, you know, the chapter begins with the grandest and greatest things. They don't mean squat. They don't mean anything without love. Um, that, is, that is what it's all about. That's the heart of the Father. That's the heart of Christ. And as his children, uh, that, is, that is meant to be the heart of us. Our love for him, our love for one another, our love for our neighbors, um, and our love for our neighbors coming through, and a love that, that shares Jesus, making disciples of all nations. So as we look at that chapter, you know, starting in verse four, uh, and this is a premarital exercise, but it serves disciples well to utilize that uh, this descriptor of love. And love is patient, love is kind, does not even be. And kind of put your, insert your name in there and see how honest you sound. If you were to say, you know, Brent is kind, Brent is et cetera, et cetera. You know, insert your name there. And that really ought to, ought to check us and let us know uh, who we're to be and who we're to be about. And I love Paul's challenge in there. You know, there's some other things that we see, and he says, talks about these spiritual gifts, these unique spiritual gifts of uh, prophecy and, and miracles and, and revelation and tongues. And he says, hey, these things are going to cease. Now we know in part, but then we, we will know in full. So we prophesy in part because we know in part, but then we will know in full, and the partial uh, or the imperfect will pass away. And what, uh, what I align with and what, what many uh, scholars point out there is that uh, Paul is, uh, is most likely talking about the scriptures coming to completion, right? So this is one of Paul's earliest letters, one of the earliest letters in the New Testament. And so obviously the, the uh, New Testament's not written. So the full will of God, the whole counsel of God has not been documented, has not been recorded and preserved. Uh, what we have access to. And so there seems to be a real indication that uh, these things were unique for a time and place coming through the apostles and those the apostles laid their hands on, but they would not persist forever. And uh, I think there's, there's some real credence to that. Um, but beyond that, as Paul moves past that, I love the way he talks about manhood. And he says, um, and one, the Bible never backs down from manhood. Uh, God means something uh, when he made man. And regardless of what culture has to tell you, uh, what God has to say is right. And men ought to grow up and ought to not act like little boys and be childish, but ought to act manly. But recognize what Paul has to say here, right? This is in the context of love. He says, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I left such things behind me. And what he's talking about here is love. So he's saying, man, I used to be a child. I used to be a boy because I didn't love. But when I grew up, when I became a man, I started to love. Um, so there's a unique challenge in here for men to grow up and be selfless, sacrificial, and loving. And there's a challenge, obviously, for the females as well to, uh, to grow up into loving, serving selfless individuals and for those of us who went to refocus uh, and for those who didn't you, you really uh ought to go next year if you have any seriousness about becoming what god desires you to be and the theme for it was growing up and the reality is hey roxette hey sam bam the reality is um that in order to have accomplished the great things that we're praying about and we're dreaming about is necessary that we grow up. You know, we look at the story of the delay in the wilderness, Israel being in the wilderness for 40 years. That wasn't God's intention. It didn't have to be that way. But the reality is the reason that they didn't go up the promised land and take it by force with God's help is because they were unwilling to grow up in their time out there. And I think that's especially fitting right now in our campus ministry because we are on the cusp of, of the promised land, on the cusp of real kingdom breakthrough, 
on our campuses. I mean, just take a peek around at worship today. We had nine guests there at worship. Um, that's the most that, that we've had at Connect on a Sunday. Um, we've got exciting, exciting events taking place in the ripest time of the year, the fall semester, and God's given us the momentum. Oh, but now is, now is the time. Now is the time for us to grow up in Christ and commitment to him, to grow up into adopting responsibility and the purpose that he's placed for us, a recognition of the call that in the body of Christ and in the Ignite Campus Ministry, every member is a minister. That if we're gonna multiply and we're gonna reproduce the way that we long to, uh, each individual has to, has to pick up the load and start sharing who Jesus is and what he's done as we pursue things like getting into and initiating 20 studies and recognition that that's gonna take growing up, manning up, woman up, asking people, recognizing you're gonna to have to ask many, many individuals to get a yes. And you're gonna study with many individuals before there's a yes said to Jesus. But these are the kind of things that God can and will bring about if we will commit ourselves to him fully and completely. So I love you guys. I appreciate the hard work that's clearly showing up um, and the prayer revolution of hard work that's showing up and hands and feet getting after it on campus meeting folks. Let's keep on. Let's press on. Let's see this through. Love you. Have a good day.